Humans in most sci-fi stories are the underdogs, the ones that are invaded by other alien species, or the ones holding the ground with other lesser species against an impending doom. That is kind of cliche, but still an attractive positioning of humanity in a universal pecking order or to make us root for ourselves. But there are other settings where we are the prime species or we are the most advanced ones in the entire universe. But the tricky thing here is, which one of these human civilizations rang out on top when placed against each other? To solve this puzzle, we must rate them according to the Kardashev scale, which is a theoretical framework proposed by Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev in 1964 to measure a civilization's level of technological advancement based on its energy consumption, well at least using this as a rough base for comparison and also including other stuff which might have escaped the Russian physicist's imagination. So let's begin. So here we start with more well-known interstellar human civilizations in sci-fi that have reached a type 1 or 1 plus civilization on the Kardashev scale, meaning that they have mastered the energy resources of their home planet and have begun extending their influence into nearby planetary systems and the interstellar space. These civilizations are capable of great feats of engineering, of building orbital infrastructures, traveling between stars and even reshaping worlds, in a way, though they can still fall short of harnessing the full output of their stars. And for practical reasons, even though they can harness the power output of planets, they don't do so. Humanity in the United Federation of Planets of Star Trek has achieved mastery over planetary energy and building massive infrastructures like the Yorktown Space Station. In Babylon 5, the Earth Alliance illustrates a civilization, humanity, just entering the Type 1 category and would be on the same scale as Star Trek. They utilize fusion power, maintain orbital habitats like Babylon 5, and operate starships capable of interstellar travel via jump gates. The Imperium of Man in Dune by Frank Herbert is another example. It spans thousands of habitable worlds governed by a rigid theocratic feudal system. Although highly advanced in certain areas, particularly in human enhancement, in planetary control and space travel through the prescience fueled spacing guild, the Dune universe has largely rejected artificial intelligence and certain scientific avenues due to the Butlerian Jihad. As a result, their technology stagnates by design. Then the universe of EVE Online presents a unique and chaotic version of a Type 1 plus human civilization with multiple factions controlling hundreds of solar systems, operating massive fleets and constructing kilometer scale orbital structures like the Keep Stars. Though fragmented and decentralized, EVE's human empires have industrialized vast portions of the galaxy and they operate on a higher level than the other previous ones. Now in the Halo universe, there is ancient humanity, the ancestors, who were once a formidable Type 1 plus civilization. Before their downfall at the hands of the Forerunners, ancient humans possessed advanced genetic engineering, interstellar travel and powerful weapon systems. They colonized numerous star systems and coexisted and even competed with the galaxy's most powerful civilization, the Forerunners. Their downfall after the Forerunner and the Flood War kept them from reaching a Type 2. But their past technological heights demonstrate their mastery of interstellar travel over gravity manipulation and early precursor technologies positioning them as a Type 1 plus power at their peak. But above them is the Galactic Empire of the Foundation series by Isaac Asimov. This here represents a Type 1 plus civilization but although the empire spans millions of planets and has access to incredible technology and engineering, it suffers from a scientific stagnation and also a central decay. Now we jump to the Type 2 in the Kardashev scale, intragalactic. Here we begin with the Star Wars Galactic Empire. This galaxy-wide civilization of Star Wars spans millions of inhabited worlds with robust straight networks, hyperspace lanes and political control stretching across vast regions of space. Technologies like hyperdrives enable faster than light travel across the entire galaxy within days, implying the manipulation of massive energy resources and a deep understanding of exotic physics. Megastructures like the Death Star, which is capable of destroying entire planets by channeling energy on a scale that rivals stellar output. That indicates at least temporary or localized access to star-scale energy consumption, even if not efficiently or sustainably harnessed. With the inclusion of the Star Killer Base, humanity here in Star Wars effectively becomes a Type 2 since it was able to harness and consume suns or stars as a power source. Despite this power, the Star Wars galaxy is marked by a deep technological stagnation. 
For over 25,000 years, the fundamental technologies blasters, hyperdrives and lightsabers and droids have remained largely unchanged. Advanced technologies are widespread, including artificial intelligence, yet they have failed to become a post-scarcity civilization. And talking about a post-scarcity civilization, here we have the culture from the culture series by Ian M. Banks. This one represents one of the most technologically and socially advanced ones in science fiction. At its core, the culture is a post-scarcity, post-biological, anarchist utopian society made of both humans and hyper-advanced artificial intelligences called minds. These minds, which were powerful AI entities, were created by humans and they governed the culture society, though not through coercion but through cooperation, benevolence and sheer intellectual superiority. At least that's what the humans think here. While us humans live leisurely, with indulgent lives with no need to work, and the minds control almost all large-scale operations from economics to diplomacy and warfare. Their ships, some of which are kilometers to hundreds of kilometers long, are sentient. They can travel faster than light, and they house entire ecosystems and populations. They manage and construct even the massive orbitals, which are like Dyson rings. Perhaps most as astonishing is how little the culture cares about material concerns. Resources are so abundant and so easily managed by AI that concepts like money, scarcity or centralized governance are irrelevant. Matter synthesis, neural editing and mind uploading are standard. Individuals here can change sex, enhance or suppress emotions or transfer consciousness into new bodies at will. However, this is decadence at its peak for humanity. Then next we have humanity from the dark age of technology or the golden age of humanity which represents the pinnacle of human advancement in the Warhammer 40k universe, which is a feat never again attained in the future. Here humanity reached or possibly surpassed a type 2 status on the Kardashian scale. It was an age defined by boundless scientific ambition, by galactic exploration, a post scarcity society, and the creation of technologies so advanced that they now appear indistinguishable from magic to the Imperium of the 41st millennium. At their height, humans of this era had colonized millions of worlds across the galaxy, aided by the invention of the warp drive and a gala field which allowed them to travel the warp safely between star systems. This rapid expansion led to the golden age of expansion where terraforming, astro-engineering and interstellar infrastructures unified far-flung colonies under a federated rule centered on Terra. They were aided by what they call the standard template constructs, the STC systems, which are in essence, self-replicating databanks of all human technological knowledge designed to help even unskilled colonists to build cities, machinery and even defensive weapons. These devices enable every human world to become a self-sustaining and technologically advanced one, effectively creating a galactic post-scarcity civilization. As for weapons, they were able to build mechanivores that eat planets, swarms that can delete everything in their path, Dyson spheres or Dyson rings to harness the full power of stars and they were tapping into energies that bordered or even exceeded the energy output of stars. But like many speculative high civilizations here, their downfall was not due to external forces but an AI rebellion. Now next we have the post-galactic or intergalactic civilizations which are in the type 3 of the Kardashian scale. The first ones are the Alterans of the Stargate universe which were amongst the most advanced species ever in science fiction with capabilities that place them well beyond a type 2 and bordering or even reaching type 3. They are the precursors of humanity and they evolve on a different galaxy. They have already developed reliable intergalactic hyperdrive technology millions of years before Earth's first civilizations arose. They built stargates which house stable wormholes across space, including intergalactic distances. This requires incredible mastery over quantum mechanics, gravity and energy conversion. Constructs like the Arc of Truth, time dilation devices, zero-point modules, and the Dakara superweapon showed that they could create or destroy life on a galactic scale. The zero-point modules, for instance, tap into exotic vacuum energy, essentially drawing energy from subspace. The Alterans were not just powerful, but also deeply philosophically mature, to the point of refusing to interfere directly in mortal affairs, especially after achieving ascension or a post-biological nature. But beyond them we have the human transcendence from the Zeely Sequence. See, in the Zeely Sequence series of novels by Stephen Baxter, humanity was shown in different levels of development and technological advancements as the countless millennia passed by. After being subjugated by two different alien species in the past, the resurgent humanity decided to never again be under the whip of a Xenos. Aided by scientific discoveries, reverse engineering and the recovery of Zeely technology, 
humans became the dominant species of the Milky Way galaxy, becoming the subjugators of other aliens and their effective rulers. And by the time of the war with the Zeli commencing, humans have the capabilities to hurl planets and stars against the Zeli and its megastructure the ring. They were still inferior to the strange alien race. But nevertheless, they can fight battles in time. They can create megastructures and even attain transcendence, becoming a multiversal reality warping super species, something akin to Star Trek's Q continuum, which can wage war against the Zeli across the entire Lanakea supercluster of the galaxies, doing this well into the year 700,000 AD, and thus became the most advanced species second only to the Zeli themselves in the universe. If it were not for the Fortina birds pushing for the death of the universe prematurely, this universe's humanity would have become like the Zeli and thus reach a type 4 classification on the Kardashian scale. But to be fair, we should at least include one from anime. So here we have humanity from the Gurren Lagann universe. Here they are portrayed as a highly post-apocalyptic and regressed society at the start, but as the story progresses, humans quickly evolve technologically and philosophically, developing into a space-faring civilization with massive spiral-powered battleships and, eventually, supermassive mechs like the Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann or the Super Tengen Topa Gurren Lagann, a machine on an intergalactic scale powered by spiral energy. By the end of the series, humanity transcends far above classic interstellar levels, being able to manipulate reality itself, operating on a post-physical, potentially Type 3 plus scale, as they combat the anti-spirals which is another civilization that had already achieved a universal control and chose stasis over growth. Now stepping up a notch, here we enter the universal engineering scale, the type 4 on the Kardashev scale. At first we have the Therians from the 8043 universe. These extremely ancient Therians from the miniature gaming universe of 8043 had reached a point in their development where they as a species can think about altering the life cycle of the universe. They were originally humans who have transcended their mere biological forms and have become highly advanced cyborgs. Their goal is simple, and that is the universe must be tame. In fact, the Therians in the past have discovered that the universe would only allow them to live for a future 20 billion years, which on the grand scale of eternity isn't really much. There are two grand destinies here. One, if the universe keeps expanding, it will cool down and die. And if it contracts, it will end up being only energy concentrated in a single point, a singularity. Both hypotheses would not allow perpetual existence or hyperlife. So to avoid either situation, the Therians have decided to stop the expansion or contraction of the universe and keep it stable. Their goal, or the Therian project, is to shape the entire universe into something completely controllable by them. In order to achieve this, they intend to change all planetary systems into Therian habitats, just like the factory world called Damocles in their universe. This way, they will be able to stop the universe from expanding or contracting, just suspending it forever. Then we also have the multivac or the hive mind of humanity in The Last Question by Isaac Asimov. Here humanity eventually transcends individual existence and merges into a collective, a trillion soul hive mind, ultimately becoming part of an advanced computer called the multivac. This hive mind was formed through extensive biocomputer interfacing over the course of millions if not billions of years, thus allowing humanity to exist outside of space-time, being sheltered from the heat death of the universe in hyperspace. The story of the last question actually explores the question of whether entropy can be reversed, to which the multivac keeps answering insufficient data for meaningful answer. Before the end of the universe, and them, humanity fusing with the multivac, they transcended, and here we have the creation of a new universe which occurred when the supercomputer, after billions of years of evolution and even more in processing data, finally understands how to reverse entropy, which was the tendency of the universe to go towards disorder. But here, there was nothing or no one to explain the answer to, and so it just demonstrates it with one phrase, let there be light, and thereby creating a new universe. But far beyond anything else are the downstreamers, which are multiversal creators, a type 5 on the Kardashev scale. The downstreamers of the Manifold series, which is a connected storyline which includes the original four books and the World Engines trilogy written by Stephen Baxter, takes place across multiple universes in a subset of the Omniverse known as the Manifold, which is ruled over by these downstreamers. And these here are the far future descendants of humanity, who have become like gods themselves, capable of almost anything, with a technological ranking far above anything else. The downstreamers are also known as the Old Ones, 
after the collapse of their multiverse. They are a post-human, a hyper-post-human civilization who were born in a primal universe. They are the first and the oldest race in the manifold and are in fact the creators of said manifolds and in a funny way, they are also the descendants of humanity. They actually survived the heat death of their universe which of course would take place trillions of years in the future and after that, in seeking to expand their possibilities in regard to the creation of life, reached back in time to send messages to the 21st century in order to inform their ancestors whom they call the Malign Blues of their plans to restructure the manifold universe. One of their hyper-advanced capabilities is for example, creating a universe-sized construct which was built around cosmic strings, created as a shelter of sorts to all different kinds of organisms, with different sections that have their own pocket universe bubbles which are tailored to suit the needs of all types of living organisms. And by far, the downstreamers are the most advanced examples of a human civilization in science fiction with their creator-like abilities. And with that we end this video. If you like this one then watch this other one too, the one in the end screens. And do hit the like button for support or smash the subscribe button to be a part of Legio Nutbug. Till the next time, take care boys.